Okay, so continuing our conversation about chemical nomenclature, one thing that there's many things uh, that we could continue to talk about with chemical nomenclature, it's a large topic. But one more thing we want to talk about at this level is being able to name acids. Acids are ionic species which dissociate an H plus when they're dissolved in water, either completely or somewhat. Um, to identify an acid when we are uh, naming species, usually an acid is an ionic compound that presents H first as the cation in the pair. We know um, from class maybe that uh, the acid actually um, transports as hydronium H3O plus, but we will see it on the acid molecule simply as H plus as the proton we will see it there. It's transported through the, um, the solvent as hydronium. And acids, by definition, have to be in aqueous solutions to transport that hydronium. Uh, and so they're going to always show aqueous as a phase designator. And we can count on seeing that as the state of the solution aqueous. So an H plus as the cation and aqueous. Um, to see that it's an acid. There's two types of acid nomenclature we should concern ourselves with. The first is binary acids, which are composed of the hydrogen cation and a non-metal element anion or a polyatomic anion that doesn't have oxygen, which is pretty rare, but something like cyanide. To name binary acids, we start with the prefix hydro, always, that indicates it's a binary acid. The non-metal anions root with the suffix ic, and then we throw the word acid in. So here we have hydrogen as a cation and aqueous uh, species. So these are both indicators that it's an acid. The anion is not a polyatomic ion um, <clears throat> with or without oxygen. It's a um, monoatomic nonmetal anion. So this is a binary acid. And so we would call it hydrochloric and then the word acid. HF, again, binary acid. We have just a single anion monoatomic species. Hydrogen is the cation aqueous symbol. So hydrofluoric. Uh, acid. I have ic twice here, hydrofluoric acid. The other type of nomenclature category for acids we can consider are oxoacids. Oxoacids are composed of that same hydrogen, but with a polyatomic oxyanion as um, the pair. And for that, we are not going to use the hydro prefix for oxoacids. We're just going to use the oxoanion's name but we're going to change the suffix to ic or os, depending on whether or not the oxyanion suffix is eight or it. Remember, in the rules, maybe or maybe not remember, but in the rules in our naming ionic species uh, video, we talked about the polyatomic oxyanions having suffixes that indicated the number of oxygens in them, and those being eights and ites, those become ics and oses when those same oxyanions become acid. And then we add the separate word acid. So if it was an eight polyatomic anion like acetate or chlorate or perchlorate, it's going to the suffix change to an ic. If the suffix originally was an ite like sulfite, or nitrite or hypochlorite, then that ite will become the suffix os. So this is nitrate with a hydrogen and the aqueous. So it's an acid with an oxoanion root of eight. So it will become ic. That's nitric acid. NO2 is nitrite, same H plus cation and aqueous. We have an acid here. Nitrite, then ite becomes os. 
So same root, but now the suffix instead of ik would become os. This is nitrous acid. And here we have sulfate, which is SO42 minus, and oxoanion ending in eight. Because it's two minus, it's going to need two H pluses to counter it, but we still have the cation H plus, the aqueous symbol. This is an acid. There's just two protons to dissociate in solution. So sulfate eight becomes ick. This is sulfuric acid. So using those rules of binary acids and oxo acids, let's name the following acid. We have the hydrogen cation, the aqueous state indicator. We have an acid, a binary acid. When we split and dissociate this acid, we don't have an anion that's polyatomic. Monoatomic, no oxygens involved. So it's a binary acid. We're going to start with the prefix hydro, always. Then the nonmetal root, the nonmetal is iodine. So hydroiodine. And we're going to use the suffix ic, hyodic, and then separate word acid. Hydroiodic acid. All right, so we have a hydrogen cation and an aqueous symbol. So we have an acid. When we dissociate our acid, we have our carbonate, CO3, 2 minus carbonate. Anion, so we have two H pluses to counter the charge so that we have two plus equal two minus, so the charges cancel. Our ion is an oxoanion with an eight suffix, so carbonate would be carbonic, and then the word acid, so no hydro because it's an oxo acid. Carbonate would be carbonic because of the eight acid, carbonic acid. So identify the acid by the hydrogen, the aqueous. Separate and identify the anion. If it's an oxo anion, eight or ite to become ic or os respectively. And the hydro goes with the binary acids. No hydro with oxo acids. Always end with the word acid. Let's try one more. HBr. So we have the hydrogen cation. We have the aqueous symbol. It's an acid. When we split it into solution, it separates from a Br, a bromine, Br minus. That's a halogen monoatomic. So this is a binary acid, which starts with hydro. Then our nonmetal bromine root, bromic, hydrobromic with the suffix and the word acid. <clears throat> Following acid, so starts with an H, right? And of course, in molecules, you can have hydrogen, but the hydrogen usually is counted after carbons and a couple other elements when present. And so usually does not lead the species, but when it is a hydronium cation, it's going to be in that leading position in the formula, the aqueous symbol. And so we take a look. Our counter ion is a polyatomic ion with oxygen. This is acetate which is one minus. So this uh, is an acid. It's an oxo acid with acetate, which has an eight suffix. So it should become ick. So this is acetate acetic acid and the word acid. So this is acetic acid or household vinegar. Acetic acid it comes from the acetate oxo anion and the hydrogen. So that's just um, a quick primer on how to identify acids uh, in the context of nomenclature and how to separate them between the binary and oxo acids. 
and then how to name them. So hopefully you take this knowledge into the nomenclature practice, go through that practice, and then check your results and make sure that you know how to name assets. Okay, thanks for listening.